Hello Cloud Gurus and welcome to our special Sydney Summit edition of AWS This Week, live from the Sydney International Convention Centre in Darling Harbour. I'm Julian Pittis. And I'm Nick Trantafilu. In this episode, we'll be covering the major themes and announcements from the summit. We'll take a look at A Cloud Guru's strategy for the first ever Sydney Deep Racer League and dish out some of our top tips for competing yourself. And cover some of this week's releases before announcing this week's Guru of the Week winner. So sit back and enjoy this week's episode of AWS This Week. Day one at Summit kicked off with a welcome to country from Aunt Ann Weldon. Aunt Weldon is a representative of the Metropolitan Local Aboriginal Land Council and a custodian of the land here in Sydney. Anne's message to the attendants was about uplifting communities and working together to achieve a better outcome for everybody. The message of collaboration was continued throughout the day with Jordan Nguyen showing the power of technology to improve people's lives by enabling them to interact with the environment like they couldn't in the past. Machine learning and AI were a big feature of the day with Ty Brady, Amazon's chief technologist in robotics, highlighting that machines and humans have very different strengths, and the future is all about extending human capability in collaboration with machines and robots. The Summit Days continued the theme of using these tools to augment human capability. After all, there are just some things that humans are better at. But for us to build those tools, we need builders. We need to train for a better tomorrow, and education is a key factor in getting there. The highlight is what is known as Amara's Law, which states we tend to overestimate the effect of technology in the short run and underestimate the effect in the long run. He believes we are currently in the overestimation phase of the law and expressed excitement for the future when robotics has a major impact on society. A very own VP of content, Peter Sparsky, could be seen around Sydney Summit taking his community hero obligations very seriously. Pete was interviewed live from the conference floor on the AWS community Twitch stream. The stream featured t-shirt throwing, a discussion about serverless architecture and its use cases, and covered ACG's origins as an early serverless adopter. It was a fun stream and you can watch it if you missed it on the link below. Dr. Pete could also be found at the AWS Developer Night, which featured a great presentation from Becky Weiss, a senior principal engineer at AWS on how to up your game in IAM. Nikki Klein, a senior technical evangelist with AWS, presented a collaborative live coding demo. She built an SMS sentiment analysis application live on stage in under 20 minutes, an incredible feat. The audience was spirited, some might even say unruly, but Nikki carried the day. Developer night wrapped up with the announcement that Jeff Barr will be the keynote speaker for the upcoming AWS Community Day in Melbourne, Australia. The Cloud Gurus are super excited to have Jeff joining us in our hometown, and we'll be there in full force. We hope to see all you gurus that can make it there too. The AWS Community Day is on August 30th, and you can find out more about it in the event link below. The Deep Racer console has just made it to general release, with the Sydney Summit hosting the first physical race for Australia. Competitors from a broad spectrum of backgrounds put their machine learning skills to the test for a chance at an all-expenses-paid trip to reinvent in Las Vegas later this year. So, Nick, how did you go in the Deep Racer League? Yeah, we learnt a lot. There are two leagues for the Deep Racer, one physical run here at the summits, and one occurring completely in the virtual space for those that might not be able to make it. One of our key takeaways is that what works well virtually is not guaranteed to work in the physical world at all. For the virtual league, training models for longer periods seems to yield better results. But when it comes time to take it into the real world, overtraining is a real risk. The model gets too comfortable in the uniform perfection of virtual environments. And when it comes to the real world, with all the shadows and colour variances and humans walking around, things can go a bit awry. It's a good idea to try and limit the training models that will be raced in the real world to a handful of hours so that this doesn't happen. For those of you who are interested in machine learning, it's a great introduction of some of the core concepts and you could also walk away with some awesome prizes. We hope to see you on the track next time. It's easy to get caught up in the amazing atmosphere here in the Sydney Summit, but let's look at some of the other great releases that happened during the week. Following the announcement and reinvent last year, Amazon have recently announced the general availability of S3 batch operations. S3 batch operations make it super easy for customers to manage millions of S3 objects with a single API call. These can be things like object properties or metadata or even copying objects between different buckets. Batch operations can significantly reduce the time that it takes to change a large volume of objects that would have required some custom development, and it would have taken months of work. This new feature manages retries, it tracks progress, and it sends notifications for all the operations that's performed on the objects. And you can even generate reports at the end of the job to give you peace of mind that all the tasks completed successfully. 
Direct Connect has added support for Transit Gateway. This now allows customers with thousands of Amazon VPCs to connect to their on-premise networks using Gigabit Direct Connect connections. Direct Connect introduced a new type of virtual interface called the Transit Virtual Interface to support the new connection. That's right, Nick. Not only have they got Direct Connect support, but AWS have also announced the ability to migrate your site-to-site -site VPNs to an AWS Transit Gateway without making any changes on your customer gateway and preserving your endpoint IP addresses on AWS. Not only can you now connect users through Transit Gateway, but it also opens up other gateway transitions like Transit Gateway to Virtual Private Gateway, two Transit Gateways to each other, or between two Virtual Private Gateways. AWS This Week wouldn't be complete without a Guru of the Week. So let's give away some awesome prizes and bragging rights to a lucky viewer. Our winner for this week's AWS Guru of the Week is Stephen Sennett. Stephen is a systems engineer from Melbourne. Congratulations, Stephen. We'll be sending you a care package containing a t-shirt, some stickers, and a hand-signed card. For all you other gurus who want a special prize package, try your luck by answering our question, which can be found at this link. Before we go, the regular hosts of AWS This Week, Ryan and Faye, will be at the AWS Summit in London on the 8th of May. If you want to meet them for selfies or just a chat, head on over to the CloudReach booth between 12 and 2 p.m. That's all we have time for in this special Sydney Summit edition of AWS This Week. Make sure you stop by the Cloud Reach booth and say hello to Ryan and Faye if you're in London. And remember, keep being awesome, Cloud Gurus. That's you too. I know. <laughs> and if you remember, <laughs> if you remember to do that. And remember, keep, keep being, being awesome, awesome, Cloud Gurus. Cloud Gurus.